I'm gonna guess at least 15% of y'all are here to see whether I'm clickbaiting or not. I'm not. Would you believe me if I told you there's a way to increase your DPS in the game that is not stated anywhere in the entire game whatsoever? If you know what snapshotting are, if you know what iframes are, if you know the two sets you should be running on every team are, you can leave the video. That's what we're gonna be talking about right now, I think. Yo, we're trying to get 250k subscribers for the end of the year. If you'd like to help on that, don't. If you learned something new today, why not subscribe? And if you think I'm not a bitch, why not subscribe? <laughs> Let's get into the video, huh? So I want to talk about the first advanced tip that we're going to be talking about in today's video. First, just me and you before I actually show the footage. So that way it's easier to understand what's happening and why it's happening. So there's this thing called snapshotting and it's prevalent in a lot of video games, yet it's never said that it's in a lot of video games. So pretty much what it is is this. So when you apply a buff to a character, let's say you get 80% extra attack power for 15 seconds. Your character's attack will go up by 80% for 15 seconds. Now the game's coding makes it very easy to understand, oh, okay, so for 15 seconds, this character's gonna have 80% increased attack power. But there's this thing that happens when you use an ability that's going to persist past that buff while the buff is occurring. Because what the game state is going to do in order to prevent um, major processing issues, just too much demand of the game's main data, is it's going to take what your attack was at the current game state when you cast an ability and let that persist for the entire ability rather than just the initial buffs duration so what i'm saying is that makes no sense you have a 15 second buff okay 80 percent extra attack at the last second before the buff falls off if you cast a damage over time or ability or something easier to understand fish is e that buff is not going to fall off for the rest of her E, meaning you can take a 15 second attack buff and extend it by an extra 10 seconds for certain abilities. And that is how you really abuse certain fucking items that people say are worse than other items, and I'm so sick of it. All right, so let me show y'all a real example of how snapshotting works in the game and how you're gonna do it. I'm gonna show y'all with the example of Wolf's Gravestone, but you can do it even with a three-star tome that you'll run on any of your supports. So pretty much check this out, okay? We're gonna drop fish right here, and she's gonna summon out Oz. Now, Oz is going to last for 10 seconds. As you can see, her normal attacks are going to hit for 792, over and over and over again, occasionally critting for 1258, okay? And I wanna show you all this real quick so you can kinda of see what I'm talking about. My weapon, Wolf's Gravestone, and you don't need this for the example, so don't leave the comment, oh, Tectone, I don't have a five-star sword, so I can't do this. Let me show you an item that you can use it. Uh, thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, a three-star tome, one of the best support items in the entire game, and it's a three-star. When switching characters, the new character taking the field has their attack increased by 48% for 10 seconds okay so you can use this buff and then as it's about to run out you can drop your ability at the last second and then you can use it like that easy peasy once again i'm a whale so i want to show it off like this okay so once again the number to remember is 792 okay she's gonna get a wolf over her head so we have a wolf over her head now you can see that we have a bunch of arrows over our body okay so now we're gonna drop the fist the debuff or the buff remains we're gonna drop the e okay now watch 996, 996, 996. The buff has fallen off, yet I'm still hitting for 996. And that is the entire premise of how snapshotting works. So that is literally free DPS that you can use, abuse, and it's not bannable. It's totally legal to do. So many games have this, but it's never strictly written into the game's uh, instruction manual, I guess. But you can use that shit right now in order to pump out even more DPS. And that shit will add the more buffs you have going on. And by the way, that cannot just that can that's not only useful for one character. If I did that with the Luke, and then I swapped to a Zhangling, tossed out the E, swapped to Fish, dropped out the E, swapped to Venti, dropped out the Alt, we now have that buff that was sp supposed to run out on three different abilities. So you can really juice out a lot of extra DPS by knowing and using snapshotting. That's gonna be the difference in pushing the majority of your abyss runs is taking advantage of every single DPS bonus as possible. Okay, now we're going to talk about iframes. In case you don't know, when something is being thrown at you, if a projectile is coming at you, you generally think you're going to have two options. Get out of the way or you're gonna get hit. 
That's not the case for Genshin. In case you don't know, when you cue your dodge mechanic, you actually temporarily become invulnerable. Now, this is very important because rather than dodging away from an object, you can actually dodge into it, get to the bosses and the enemies faster, while also completely avoiding the damage and maximizing your DPS uh, uptime. And I will show you some of the bosses. Well, you can pretty much do this on any boss, but I'll show you a very clear-cut example of, of, of using iframes to your advantage. All right. Here we go. I'm going to be pretty quiet for this because it does take a little bit more focus, but uh, just please notice how I dodge and notice my HP. So if you notice there, even though I dodged into it and it fully hit me, it didn't do any damage. And that's pretty much the entire idea of um, iframes. And the reason why that's so good here is like, look, 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 look. you see that? You see that? You can even dodge relatively late, but as long as you're still in the dodge animation, you're invulnerable, which is really nice. So it's 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 pretty tight for some things, but even for that right there, even that right there, you can dodge like that. And even though it's still hitting me, because I've queued up the uh, the dodge and you still have the invulnerability frames, you can get away with a lot of shit. And for bosses like the Electro Hypostasis, the closer you can get into its core, the more you can keep your DPS up time. All right, last thing, because I want to keep this video relatively short, is this is actually two sets that you can run in your characters, and you don't even really need to upgrade them that much. So you can run these on like literally artifact level zero and still get a shit ton of benefit um, from running them. But the two sets are, and I run, I run two of these sets, or I run a set of these on each of my two teams for abyss uh no matter what so the sets are exile and instructor now these are very 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 good okay so look instructor two piece increases elemental master by 80 just baseline and then also four set uh after using an elemental skill increases all party members elemental master by 120 for eight seconds so that means you go in you dump your zhang ling and then you'll also get a buff for the rest of your party members to also then uh, continue to dump the rest of their shit and you just keep up that cycle and also keep in mind this does have no internal cooldown and does not cancel out by other members so you technically could run on two instructors in your team and honestly that's not a bad idea uh, but you should also run a set of exile on uh, at least one member of your party for every party that you have because if you look energy recharge plus 20 percent so you can use abilities more often and then also using an elemental burst regenerates two energy for other party members every two seconds for six seconds but this effect cannot stack so you can run one set of exile and two sets of instructor and just really abuse these extra benefits that you otherwise wouldn't normally be getting and it's so goddamn good that you can even use this at like plus zero and you'll still see a benefit for the majority of your party because the stats are so goddamn good now would i recommend upgrading these pieces if they're good yes but as you can see uh, the upgrades that i've done for these characters really aren't that much as you can see i have a plus zero right here and i'm breezing through the game and i've been doing this since day one even on my free to play accounts obviously this account is not free to play because twitch chat doesn't let me be free to play but i'm telling you the bonuses are huge the bonus Bonuses are worth and i'm pretty damn sure all y'all should be able to have at least an exile set and an instructor set because you get those things like crazy that's gonna be the end of the video i saw another video on youtube about how to massively increase your dps and i clicked on that way like what the fuck is this shit gonna be and then it was just a dude telling me to upgrade my equipment <laughs> i was like oh you don't say bro i got clickbaited so hard it was hilarious so i decided to make this video because you know the title sounds pretty interesting and it's actually not clickbait because you know most people probably don't know that the uh, mechanics in the game that nobody tells you about so hopefully this helps somebody out if you did learn something new make sure to subscribe but i'm just full disclosure i don't only make guides I really don't. I majorly make meme videos, but uh, there's just something about talking about Genshin, the way that it works, the little bonuses that you can do. just gets me excited. I fucking love this game. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. I'm gonna get out of here. Peace.